So if we're going to be differentiating implicit equations, part of the problem is that we now have to deal with what happens when we differentiate with y. So really we want to know from the basis, from the basics rather, what are the derivatives of y, y squared and y cubed when we're differentiating with respect to x. So the way that we write down that we are differentiating with respect to x is using d by dx. So if I have d by dx of x squared, for example, then this would be written as 2x. So all the times when you've been differentiating beforehand, where you've written y is equal to x squared, then you're effectively differentiating both sides of the equation. But this line of working here, we don't bother writing. Okay, because we know what we're doing. We're going straight to dy by dx. And so dy by dx would just be 2x. So there's this extra line of working that we don't bother writing in. Because when we've got an explicit equation, we know we're differentiating with respect to x. So from that, we can immediately say, well, of course, if I'm differentiating y with respect to x, then if y is a function of x, which we take it to be here, then the derivative is just dy by dx. That seems reasonable enough. The derivative of y with respect to x is dy by dx. So how about y squared? Well, if we know what the derivative of y is, then we could write y squared as the product of y and y. And so then we could use the product rule in order to differentiate y squared. So the derivative of y times y will be the first times by the derivative of the second. And we know that the derivative of y is now dy by dx. Plus the second times by the derivative of the first, which is dy by dx. So we have y dy by dx plus another y dy by dx, and so we get 2y dy by dx. So how about if we were differentiating y cubed? Well, we could do this in a similar way. We could write that as the derivative of y squared times y, and use the product rule again. So that's the first times by the derivative of the second, plus the second, times by the derivative of the first. Now the derivative of y squared, we've already worked out in that second line, that was 2y dy by dx. So 2y dy by dx. So y squared dy by dx plus 2y squared dy by dx means I have 3y squared dy by dx. So now we should start to see a bit of a pattern. So if I put a 1 there, then I find that if I'm differentiating y, I get 1 dy by dx. If I differentiate y squared, I'm getting 2y dy by dx. And if I'm differentiating y cubed, I'm getting 3y squared dy by dx. So what appears to be happening is that I'm looking at the derivative of y cubed, and I differentiate it as normal, the 3 comes down to the front, I take 1 off the power, so I get 3y squared, and I stick a dy by dx on the end. So then I would expect, if I used a similar method, that d by dx of y to the power of 10 would be 10y9 dy by dx. And I'd be right. So, in actual fact, this enables us to differentiate all the polynomials that concern y. So, if I look at another example, so d by dx, so differentiate 
um, 3y to the power of 5, then this would be 15y to the power of 4 dy by dx. An extension to this is that, well, OK, well, now we can differentiate any y to the power of whatever, OK? Then how about sine of y, or e to the y, or log of y? Well, what happens is that if you're differentiating e to the y with respect to x, this differentiates to e to the y dy by dx. And d by dx of sine y would be cos y dy by dx. And d by dx of log y would be 1 over y dy by dx. So you treat the y as you would an x. Differentiate it and then stick a dy by dx on the end. Now, I'm not going to show you as to why it works in these cases. Okay, that's, that's certainly for another day, and is above our pay grade at this stage. But just so that we are able to utilise this and work with this in the problems that are going to come in the next few videos.